Do you know how dangerous a vitamin B12 deficiency can be? And many people are walking around with this deficiency and they don't even realize it until weird symptoms begin popping up. This essential nutrient plays an enormous role in many aspects of your health, from creating DNA and red blood cells to supporting bone health and stabilizing your mood by stimulating serotonin, the feel-good hormone. It also elevates your energy level. But we can't forget how critical it is for nourishing the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the havoc a B12 deficiency can wreak with your body and the extensive damage it can cause to your brain and your nerves. We'll also explore who's most at risk for developing a B12 deficiency, and I'll go over some of the causes. I guarantee you there'll be a few in there that you'll never heard of and it will take you by surprise. Now, Make sure you stick with me until the end because I'll also reveal which supplements you should never take to elevate your B12 levels. You don't want to miss this. Coming up. Hey gang, Dr. Valerie Montero here. If you're finally ready to conquer your peripheral neuropathy, reclaim your life, and start living again, then make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell so that you get notified as soon as we publish new content. Now, let's take a deep dive into this video. Vitamin B12 deficiencies are considered actually quite rare in the US, but I'm telling you, this is completely false and I'll explain why. First of all, it's important to realize that B12 is what's called an essential vitamin. This means that our bodies can't make it. We have to consume it in our diet by eating things like red meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy products. Since most of the population typically eats these things, well, then it's just automatically assumed by the standard medical community that a B12 deficiency will rarely occur. But believe it or not, this deficiency is fairly common. So how can this be? Well, you can't just look at what people are eating. You also have to take into account other things that they do in their lives that very quickly deplete their bodies of these B vitamins. And I'll go over these things in just a minute. But before I do, there's something else that I want you to be aware of. When a doctor runs a vitamin B12 lab test called a serum B12 test, it usually comes back normal. See, no deficiency. <laughs> well. Not exactly. What the average doctor doesn't realize is that this test, which measures molecules known as cobalamin, isn't sensitive or specific. This means the test does not accurately pick up on how many cobalamin molecules there are in the bloodstream. In fact, numerous research studies have pointed out how flawed this test is, and it produces the largest amount of incorrect findings. The reason doctors are still using this test to date is because they're unaware that there are better options that more accurately identify the cobalamin levels in the blood and the body. Now, the scientific literature has known that the most appropriate and most accurate way to determine a B12 deficiency is by running what's called an MMA test, which stands for methylmalonic acid in conjunction with also running a homocysteine test along with the serum B12 test. This is the only way to accurately determine if this vitamin is deficient. So why aren't doctors doing this? Well, most physicians aren't taught to run these tests together, and frankly, they don't know how to interpret the findings of this test. A B12 deficiency has severe consequences to the body. First, it can cause severe peripheral neuropathy. Lack of this vitamin can cause a breakdown in the myelin sheath of the nerve. Remember, this is the insulating coating around the nerves, including your brain and your spinal cord. And its function is to transmit electrical signals very quickly from the brain to the nerves and back again. Damaged myelin causes these impulses to slow down, resulting in peripheral neuropathy symptoms. Now, here's another thing. 
I bet you didn't know B12 is necessary for nerve growth and regeneration. Without this critical nutrient, the damaged nerve doesn't get repaired. B12 is also extremely important for brain function. A lack of it can result in cognitive decline and brain atrophy or shrinkage of the brain. This leads to significant memory loss and dementia. But it doesn't stop here. Vitamin B12 deficiencies can also lead to anemia, fatigue, muscle weakness, intestinal problems, mood disturbances, and depression. Now, let's talk about who's most at risk for B12 deficiency. Strict vegans and sometimes vegetarians. Remember, the largest dietary sources of this vitamin is from animal products like meats, poultry, fish, and eggs, which vegans don't consume. Other people at risk are elderly adults, and this is due to poor absorption of nutrients um, in their GI tract. Also, people who regularly take antacids for heartburn or GERD will be deficient. Others at risk are people who consume a large amount of caffeine daily, chronic alcohol users, people consuming processed food or junk food regularly, smokers and potentially vapors, women taking oral contraceptives or birth control pills, people with eating disorders like anorexia nervosa, in fact, we treated this beautiful young girl in her early 20s suffering from severe peripheral neuropathy caused by anorexia. Also, there are certain medications that will deplete B12, like antacids for heartburn or GERD, such as PPIs like Nexium, Prilosec, or Prevacid, and H2 blockers such as Zantac, Pepsid, or Tagamet. Other medications that will deplete this vitamin are metformin, antibiotics, methotrexate used in chemotherapy, coltracine, which treats gout, anti-seizure medications, cholesteramine, a cholesterol-lowering drug, corticosteroids, and this includes taking it orally, systemically, like in an IV, as an inhalant, and even applying it topically. Okay, so this covers who's at risk. Now, let's address medical conditions that most certainly can cause a B12 deficiency. Here's a side note, guys. I can't begin to tell you how vitally important this is because when we're treating a peripheral neuropathy patient, if we don't identify and address these issues, then chances are high, in fact, very high, that the peripheral neuropathy will return again. And then the patient has to start from ground zero all over again. And that's something no one ever wants. So conditions that can cause a B12 depletion are things like celiac disease, a severe reaction to eating gluten-containing grains, gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining, IBS or inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Short bowel syndrome. This is when portions of the small intestines have been surgically removed. Pancreatic disease like pancreatitis or pancreatic insufficiency where the pancreas isn't producing enough enzymes to break down the food that you're eating. Bariatric surgeries are huge culprits for not only B12 deficiencies, but many, many vitamin and mineral deficiencies. H. pylori infections. This is a certain type of bacterial infection that can infect the stomach. And believe it or not, it's prevalent in about two thirds of the world's population. This infection is the most common cause of ulcers. There are also a few genetic and autoimmune conditions that will result in this deficiency, such as pernicious anemia, a condition where there's a specific decrease in red blood cells because the body can't absorb enough B12. Also, transcobalamin-2 deficiency, which is a rare genetic disorder that impairs the transport of cobalamin or vitamin B12 within the body. Another genetic disorder called SNPs, which will only be found on genetic testing, can result in a B12 deficiency. And this last one is the most commonly overlooked cause, and that's stress or high activity. For instance, if you're constantly busy and on the go with work or the kids or the household, maybe you don't get enough sleep because there just aren't enough hours in the day, or you're someone who uh, you might be training intensely for an event or a competition. 
the greater the stress load on your body, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, the greater the demand for vitamin B12, which can drastically drain your levels, especially when this is combined with a diet that's lacking in this very critical nutrient. So here are 10 of the most common symptoms that you should look for in a B12 deficiency. Unexplained fatigue, pins and needle sensation, numbness, tingling, or burning in the hands or feet, muscle cramps or muscle weakness, poor coordination, pale skin or when the skin and whites of eyes take on a yellowish color, frequent headaches, difficulty concentrating or a feeling of brain fog, pain and inflammation of the mouth and tongue. In severe cases, it can include vision disturbances due to damage to the optic nerve. And number 10, it can result in erectile dysfunction. Now, let's go to the exciting part. How do you make sure you're taking enough B12? Well, for non-vegans or non-vegetarians, it's easy. As long as you're eating red meat, organ meat, poultry, fish, dairy, eggs, you should be just fine. However, guys, this doesn't count if you're eating these food groups in the form of processed food or junk food. Processed food completely obliterate all of the essential nutrients that you need. And even if the food company adds back in essential vitamins and nutrients, I guarantee they're adding in synthetic and an inferior quality at that of these types of vitamins. Next, I wanna to talk to my vegan and vegetarian friends. Guys, I so applaud you for this lifestyle choice and for your respect and love for the farm animals that are really truly being abused and mistreated. You guys are doing a great thing for your health and for the planet. So I just wanna make sure that you're not inadvertently um, sacrificing your well being. So here's what you need to do. Make sure you're consuming these important vegan food sources which contain B12. The first one is nutritional yeast. It's a great source of all of the B vitamins, but especially B12. I'm a strict vegetarian and this is a crucial part of my diet. It really is yummy and it has great flavor. And you can add it to rice, soups, eggs, really anything. But what's important is that you don't cook with it because you'll denature all of the B vitamins in there. So just sprinkle it on your food once your food is on your plate. Next on the list are shiitake mushrooms, another great source. I eat these four to five days a week and they're also packed with other great benefits like protecting your cells from damage, boosting your immune system, and decreasing inflammation. Another great mushroom is lion's mane. Besides supplying you with great um, B12 levels, it improves brain function and concentration. In fact, Research has revealed its promising benefits with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. These mushrooms also help with decreasing depression and anxiety. They boost the immune system function and they've been known to decrease pain. Other vegetarian-based foods that will supply B12 are spinach, but make sure you're consuming this raw. Also, beetroot, butternut squash, tempeh, which is a fermented high-protein plant-based food made from soybeans. Also spirulina, a blue-green algae. And nori seaweed, as well as chlorella, which is another form of algae. Be aware that these foods, though, will not have nearly as much B12 as the non-vegan counterparts like meat, eggs, etc. And if you're not consuming a large quantity of these vegan foods, you can still end up deficient. Now get ready for another side note. Once you've developed significant symptoms from a B12 deficiency, simply eating these foods usually won't reverse the symptoms. And that's because when the deficiency gets severe enough, you need a larger than normal amount of daily B12 to replenish the stores that were within your body. So this means that you have to eat an astronomical amount of food. So 
At this point, you need to add in a B12 supplement along with increasing the foods that I just mentioned that are rich in, in B12. So this brings me to my last point. What B12 supplement should you never take? There are actually four different types of vitamin B12, cyanocobalamin, methylcobalamin, adenosylcobalamin, and hydroxocobalamin. The form you should never take is cyanocobalamin. I'll explain why in one minute. First, let's look at the other forms. Hydroxocobalamin is a highly bioavailable form of vitamin B12, but it's only available by prescription and it's usually administered either in an IV drip or in an intramuscular injection. So this is used for people with severe or life-threatening deficiencies. This is not the form used when you go to your doctor's office and they give you a simple injection of vitamin B12. Both adenosylcobalamin and methylcobalamin are the naturally occurring forms found in foods. Adenosylcobalamin is mainly found in red meats, especially in organ meats like liver while methylcobalamin is found in not only meat, but also fish, eggs, dairy, and vegetarian sources that I mentioned earlier. A good quality vitamin B12 supplement will be made from methylcobalamin. Since this is a natural form of cobalamin, it has the best absorption rate in the body and the best retention. This means it will stay in the body longer before being excreted out into the urine. Now, Getting to the absolute worst form, cyanocobalamin. So what makes this form so bad? Well, first of all, it's synthetic and has a very poor absorption rate into the cells. Now, here's where it gets even dicier. Cyanocobalamin gets broken down into two molecules, cobalamin and cyanide. Yes, you heard me correctly, cyanide. Researchers have suggested that over time, there could be a buildup of cyanide within the tissues. Normally, in small doses, the liver would be able to clear this out of the body, no problem. However, in the 21st century, our livers are so overburdened with a tremendous load of toxic chemicals that many of them get stored back within the tissues of the body. So the buildup of cyanide can occur really with anyone, but smokers have an even greater risk of this buildup. Now, I want you to be aware that cyanocobalamin is the most common form used to fortify processed and packaged foods, including cereals. And it's frequently the form used when you get a regular B12 injection. So that's why when people ask me if a B12 injection is good for their health, my answer is, well, it depends, but probably not. If the injection is intramuscular and they're using hydroxocobalamin, great. But if they're using cyanocobalamin, you might as well skip it. Well, gang, that's it for today. You now have enough information to avoid a B12 deficiency, and I hope I've armed you with realizing that your blood work for your B12 probably isn't accurate. I share all of this information with you so that you can finally take back control of all aspects of your health. If you're enjoying our videos, please don't forget to like us and click on the bell to get notified as soon as we release new videos. If there's a topic you want us to cover, make sure you list that down in the comment section below. Until next time, my friends, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. Normally, in small doses, the liver would clear this out of the body. However, in the 21st century, our livers are so overburdened with a tremendous amount of toxins uh, and chemicals that many of them get stored <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right.